G'day guys, and welcome back to the channel. Exciting video today. I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for this video. Let's finally talk about the Pro TV X. Is this thing accurate? The answer is no. Well, actually, yes. But let me explain. Okay, so today in this video, I will be going through the Pro TV X. I do have my review. And the reason I wanted to wait to do this review, um, I did an initial impressions video, which is obviously where you get the device. You're really excited. It's new. It's an amazing launch monitor. It's an overhead launch monitor. It is an exciting time. Now I've had a few weeks to actually use this thing. And the reason I wait to do these reviews is I really like to get to know a launch monitor and I like to be able to confirm what I'm seeing. The exciting thing now with the channel is I have access to so many different launch monitors through my partnership with Bayside Golf. Obviously this is the Albatross package that was sent to me by Bayside the amazing enclosure, the overhead unit, and also this 4K capable computer, this PC. The cool thing is with this partnership with Bayside, Sam Express posted the GC3, so I could confirm against the gold standard. And I do, I mean, the access now that I have to high-end launch monitors is unbelievable. I'm incredibly lucky, but what it means is I can now confirm exactly what I was seeing and I'm happy to say my suspicions were confirmed. In this video though, I will be doing a full review. I'm gonna be giving you guys everything and I will be touching on accuracy, so stay tuned till the end of the video. So unboxing and setup, I have to say, when you unbox the Pro TV X, you know you are getting a quality launch monitor. The feel, um, it, just the, the styrofoam that was used that this thing came in was logoed. I mean, you feel the device, it feels like quality materials were used to make this. And it does fill you with that satisfaction that you know you're getting a quality product. It's like uh, unboxing you know, an iPhone where you open it up, you unbox it, and everything's just nice. Everything just looks really nice and feels like quality. Which is really good because if you look at the cost of this unit compared to other ceiling based units, the cost is actually very, very reasonable. We're talking, you know, almost half the price of other ceiling based launch monitors. So cost versus what you are getting, I mean, theoretically, you look at it, you look at all the data points, you look at everything this launch monitor provides versus the cost of other ceiling based launch monitors. I mean, it is incredible value. Talking of ceiling based launch monitors, this is the first ceiling based launch monitor I have used in my sim room, in my environment. And I have to say, using a ceiling based launch monitor is actually incredible. I didn't think that it would be as good as it is. And the reason I say that is I have kids and we use this sim room for other things than a golf simulator room. We watch movies as a family and other things. So this sim room does get used other than to play golf. I also have my kids come in here and hit golf balls and I give them golf lessons. And using a floor-based launch monitor, for me personally, these things are expensive. For me, it got nerve wracking. And every time the kids were in here running around, as kids do, going crazy, I always would freak out about my iMini, especially my GC2, because they are sitting to the side. So when I was using it, I had no issues. When I have people come over and, and hit balls in my sim room, or my kids hit balls with my floor-based launch monitors, I would always make them move to the furthest forward part that the actual unit would allow them to hit at, just because I didn't want any shanks or anything hitting the launch monitor. A few of the shots did get extremely close from my kids, where they hit it so far out the toe that it shot out to the right, but I'm happy to say they, they were never actually hit, but I would always feel uneasy. When we came in here to watch movies, the kids would run in, go crazy. I'd always be worrying about the, the launch monitor. You'd have to move it out the way. And I know that sounds very petty and other people won't have those fears or they won't care. But for me, I was very protective of that. And so it's just something to be aware of. With a ceiling based launch monitor, because it is on the ceiling, it's out of the way. I mean, your, your ground, your environment is very clean. There's nothing on the ground and I, Honestly, since having this, I've had my kids come in here, hit golf balls, do whatever they want, and I just have 
a sense of peace because I know the launch monitor is on the ceiling and it's not going to be interfered with. It's not going to be accidentally kicked. It's not going to be hit with golf balls. So it just gives me a bit more calm whenever I have people in here using it. Let's now talk about ceiling height because with all of these ceiling based launch monitors, you do actually have, uh, you know, optimal heights that they have to be mounted at. And one of the reasons I didn't really look into ceiling based launch monitors is because I've only got 2.7 meter ceilings. So that's just over eight foot 10 inches in the Imperial system. And when you take into account my actual mat and, and how high that's sitting, that's sitting four centimeters above my floor. When you take that all into account, that effectively means my ceiling is only 200 or 2.66 or 266 centimeters or just over eight foot, eight inches. So eight feet, 8.7 inches. So realistically for a ceiling based launch monitor, they generally like to be higher. I know the Pro-T recommends uh, 10 feet as their optimal or three meters. Uh, they say it can be used down to nine feet. And they also say it can be used down to eight foot, four inches, I believe. So straight from the Pro-T website, it says they can be used below nine feet. I'll pop it on the screen as well so you guys can read it, but they say, Eight foot eight inches is lower than recommended, but we did not find any issues. We did not receive any negative feedback from users using the VX at eight foot, feet eight inches. So as I'm just over that, I'm still able to use this launch monitor. When you start going lower than that, that's when they say you start need to use um, TP5 PIX balls and things like that. But I will be doing full in-depth testing with PIX balls and regular golf balls just to see if there's any differences in the data. So if you are gonna purchase a ceiling based launch monitor, just be aware that they do uh, differ in ceiling heights that they need to be mounted in. So it is definitely something to be aware of if you are looking to get a ceiling based launch monitor. Okay, that being said, let's talk about calibration. So in the box, you do get this board and this board is the calibration board. Calibration on this unit is extremely easy and I'm going to go through it right now. Okay, so opening the lab software, this is the lab software. Um, I will go through this later in the video, but to calibrate this unit, all you do is go to the settings in the top right hand corner. You're going to go down to where it says device and then you've got this calibrate system. So when you hit that, it'll pop up with this window. This is using the two cameras to focus on the ground and this is where you need this calibration board. So I'm going to pop this down. The thing with this is you have to align this perfectly to where you want to go. So you want to be aiming this perfectly at your screen. I will use a laser to make sure I have this perfectly aligned. Once you've done that, click on the calibrate system button. What you'll notice is the actual calibration board is there on the screen. When you hit calibrate world, what you'll see is now the unit is calibrated and this is your hitting area. So you can actually adjust the size of your hitting area. This size is massive. I mean, this is the biggest hitting area I've ever seen on any device. And it's certainly bigger than any device I've ever owned or, or used in this environment. The actual hitting area size, if you look at the screen, is 65 centimeters by 55 centimeters or 25 inches by 21 inches. That is as big as it gets. The cool thing about this though, is you can actually adjust the size of your hitting area. And what I love about this is everybody knows that I have an impact strip, or if you don't, I have an impact strip. And what this does is, is it allows me to hit balls off this impact strip um, and not get any elbow pain or wrist pain. It's a divot action style mat. What I can do is I can actually adjust the size of the hitting window to just fit over my actual mat. So you can see there, I can adjust it to the size to where this unit is just over my impact strip. And what's cool about that is that if I have balls off to the side, I'm not gonna accidentally hit them and cause a shot to happen in the world. If a golf ball is on my mat, on my impact strip, I know that it's gonna be found by the device. If it's off the impact strip, I know that it's not gonna be found by the device. So you, adjusting the size of your hitting window or where you place the ball for the actual unit to find it, that is amazing. I absolutely love that feature. And I think this is a feature that needs to be talked about a lot more because I just find it fantastic. So we can get it to be perfectly over just the impact strip and this is such a cool feature. What I actually have is I have my spotlight and I'll try and step back so you guys can see that. 
how I adjust it is so the width is going to match the actual width of the impact strip. The actual length, I have it to where it is only going to pick up a ball if it's in the light. So it's only gonna pick up the ball if it's in the light from my spotlight and it's on the impact strip. So man, this feature I absolutely love. Okay, once you're happy with where that's at, all you do is click done and now that's calibrated. So whenever I put a ball there now, I'll move the calibration board. Whenever I put a ball in the light on the mat, you can see we are ready for the shot and we're ready to hit. I love that. If I move the ball outside the light, you can see it's still finding ball. So anywhere in that light, it is gonna pick up the ball and it's gonna be ready for the shot and it's gonna be perfectly aligned. I really think that feature doesn't get talked about much. That, I don't know why, I just love that feature to be able to adjust the window to exactly how big you want your hitting area to be. I just think that's great. The other thing I wanna say about this hitting area is this unit is gonna give you this one big box and you can choose how big you want it, but the one box is then gonna be able to do left and right-handed players from the single location and it's also gonna be able to give club data for both people from the single location. So if you had a room big enough to where you could have a right-handed setup and also at the same time a left-handed setup, you could hit balls from that same location and it will show the shot in GS Pro or in the software with club data. Some of the other overheads, you do actually have to have um, left and right-handed individual spots to hit from to get club data. With the Pro T, no matter whether you're left-handed or right-handed, you are both gonna be able to hit from that same hitting location. Let's talk about some of the other benefits of this unit now. So unlike a lot of the other overheads, unlike a lot of the camera-based launch monitors, this unit doesn't require club stickers to get club data. It actually uses AI where it puts a set of reference points on the club face of the actual club when you are hitting it, it will put reference points on there and then it will use those reference points as essentially virtual stickers. So you're gonna be able to get club data without putting stickers on your club. It's a huge advantage if you are someone who plays outside a lot, plays in tournaments, or you've got a commercial facility where realistically people that come in, they don't wanna spend half an hour, 40 minutes putting stickers on all their clubs. People are gonna be able to use this unit without stickers and still get club data. I think that's a, a massive feature. And I don't think AI has been done on any other launch monitor, especially in this regard, to actually use the uh, reference points on the actual club face. No marked balls is another uh, benefit of this unit. However, if you actually dig into the forums and you read some of the information, and from what I've seen, this unit does like to see some marking on the ball. So um, either using a Titleist logo or a Callaway logo or something on the ball so it can actually lock on and get that valid spin data. It has been talked about on the forums. I have to put this to the test. So what I've done, because I'm using this outside of the recommended, you know, nine to 10 foot um, ceiling height, what I've done is I've actually switched to Pix balls. I did play the TaylorMade TP5X. I recently made that switch. What I've done is I've just bought some PIX versions of those golf balls. And I guess that's one of the advantages of using tailor-made balls. I know Titleist has uh, balls that have extra lines on them now, so you can get these Titleist golf balls with the extra lines and things like that. So potentially that can be an option if you are someone who plays Titleist golf balls. Callaway, the actual markings on Callaway golf balls are quite big. If you are gonna use this outside limits, even using something like RPT balls or, or you know the, the new Titleist RPT balls potentially, if you're gonna use this in really low ceiling heights. I will be doing, I still haven't got round to doing a test using uh, regular golf balls or unmarked normal golf balls versus the TaylorMade Pix balls. I will 100% be doing that in the future and I will report back with a full video. I feel like that in itself needs to be a separate video to the actual review. There's gonna be a lot of data and a lot of analyzing in that video. Okay, let's talk about the big one, data accuracy. And I'm gonna break this down to uh, ball data and club data because they're two separate things. And in the virtual world, say if you're playing GS Pro or you know any software, they're just gonna use the ball data. So the ball data for me needs to be accurate because if you have a unit that's reading uh, ball speed, spin rates, and these other uh, ball data wrong, 
and then it's importing that into GS Pro, GS Pro's algorithm is gonna take that data and then project the ball into the world using that data. So for me, carry distances and things like that on the softwares, I don't get too fixated on. I really care about the ball data, um, especially speed, spin, uh, VLA, HLA, all of, all of that ball data is important. And then ultimately, we have club data as a totally separate thing, because realistically, the, the club data isn't gonna affect how you play these softwares or the use of these softwares. You want the club data to be accurate because if you're trying to work on your swing, if you are trying to work on technique, you're trying to change things, you need the club data to be accurate because if it isn't, you're gonna be working on things potentially that you shouldn't be. When comparing any of these units, when I'm gonna compare the GC3, the iMini, or any other photometric base unit to another photometric base unit like the Prote, there can and will be interference with the two units. I'll put up a video now, and what you can see clearly is that the actual flash from these units, so the flash by the GC3, by the iMini, by the Rapsodo, they all can cause interference with the Prote and vice versa because they're both using infrared, they're both using different flashes, and so therefore interference can and to be honest, will happen. Because when I was comparing these units side by side, I did see some wild spin axis numbers from both devices or from all of these devices. And so to me, that is a sign of interference. I'm gonna get into some details now. And the variance and the tolerances that I'm talking about are so tight that the average user is gonna buy one of these devices and they're not gonna know any different. They are gonna get the unit and they're just gonna think it performs fantastic. When I do these tests, I really dig into the nuts and bolts. I'm talking acceptable margins within, you know, 150 RPM on spin rate, within a mile an hour ball speed, within a degree, degree uh, horizontal and vertical launch angle, within two degrees spin axis, all of these really tight tolerances that I'm gonna put these units through that a lot of people won't even notice the difference. But let's get into this. So ball data. The key metrics that I tested and, and the ball data you're gonna get from any one of these units that's gonna get imported into third-party softwares are ball speed, horizontal launch angle, vertical launch angle, backspin, and then spin axis. Also, uh, spin axis or side spin is another way of um, describing it. When I first got the Pro-T, I was hitting balls on the range warming up, and the first thing I noticed was how quick the actual shot went into the world. It just really surprised me. It was so quick, you hit the ball, you look up, and the ball is already in the world. And talking about data now, ball data, I didn't really notice anything odd or strange on the range. It wasn't until I got on the course in GS Pro that I noticed these golf balls are going a little bit further than I would expect. And so that's when I really started to dig into the data and I really started to look at the things that, that are gonna affect carry distance, which are ball speed, um, spin or backspin, and then vertical launch angle. So those are the three metrics that really piqued my interest. Now, spin axis, I have to be 100% transparent. Spin axis for me with the Pro-T is, in my opinion, it's good, it's accurate. Every shot that I hit, I would hit and I would expect to see, um, say a draw or a fade, I'd look up and I would see that shot shape. All of the club metrics, if it was closed um, face to path relationship, I'd see a draw. If I towed it, I'd see the gear effect of a draw. Same for the heel strikes. The spin axis for me is good. And I did individual tests with the Foresight and the Pro-T and the spin axis was exactly like I would expect to see from the shots I hit. I have added in the link in the description, the test that I did where the Foresight GC3 and the Pro-T were on at the same time. However, like I said, interference is a real thing. And as soon as I started comparing these things side by side on the same shot, the iMini, the Rapsodo, all of them, they did cause interference and spin axis started to go out. But that doesn't explain the extra distance I was getting on the course. So I really paid attention to those three metrics that I said before. I'll pop up the two things that I saw on screen now. Vertical launch angle was identical between the Pro-T and the GC3. Horizontal launch angle was also identical. The two metrics that seemed to be out for me with ball data were, were the ball speed, which as you can see is it, it's within the acceptable tolerance of one mile an hour. If you really want to be picky, then the four irons were 1.2 miles an hour, but this was only over five shots. So for me, yes, the ball speeds might be slightly high, but 
like I said, the tolerance I use is that one mile an hour tolerance and the ball speeds, I mean, they're pretty good. The big thing I noticed with the Pro T and the big difference, and this was across the Foresight, the iMini and the Rapsodo, which all agreed on each other, the big thing was the backspin. This for me is outside of that acceptable tolerance that I use, which is 150 revolutions per minute. As you can see on screen, we had a maximum discrepancy of 452 RPM, and that was with a seven iron. So when you couple a tiny bit of extra ball speed, technically it's within the tolerance that I set, with 500 less RPM or 400 less RPM, you are going to get a little bit extra carry distance. We're not talking much, we're talking, you know, three to five yards, but there is a difference in carry distance. And so for me, my honest opinion about the ball data and the Pro-T VX is this. It was incredibly accurate and it matched the GC3, which is the gold standard for home sim launch monitors. It matched the GC3 on everything except the backspin numbers. The backspin numbers to me, and the data proved this over a lot of testing, the backspin on the Pro TVX at the moment is slightly low, which ultimately means carry distance is ever so slightly increased. Let's talk club data now. So club data is a tough one for me because I'm very limited to what I can test with the units that I have available. The GC3 that I have uh, from Bayside is a ball data only unit. And so realistically, the only launch monitor I have to test club data is gonna be the iMini, which I know if you've watched my videos and if you look at the forums, the club data from that unit isn't very reliable. So it's not like I have a baseline to test against. But what I did is I did put the iMini head to head against the Pro TVX in terms of club speed, angle of attack, and also club path. So those were the three things I could test against the iMini. What I can tell you straight off the bat is the iMini is not good at club speed. It's not reliable. It reports everything way too quick. So I couldn't get a really reliable baseline for club speed, but what I'll say is this. With the Pro TVX, I think the club speeds are slightly low and I think they fluctuate. So this is the one metric with the Pro T that I struggled with because sometimes it would read low, sometimes it would read high, but for I'd say 90% of the time, the club metric to me appeared to be a little bit low and this caused the smash factor number to be slightly out. So I'd have a few drives that were above 1.5, I'd get about 1.54, 1.55, which tells me there's an issue with something with either ball speed or club speed. Club speed's been low, that is gonna lead to smash factor numbers that are not realistic. So for me, the club speed is something that needs to be um, looked at by the Pro-T team. Club paths, so the club paths for the Pro-T uh, compared to the iMini, the iMini was actually reporting everything more into out than the Pro-T. I've got to be completely honest, I 100% trust the Pro-T on this. The reason for that is because you can see the actual video. You can see the overhead video of your club as it comes into impact. And so for me, when I saw that, I could easily tell that it wasn't, you know, five, six degrees into out that the iMini was saying. It was more in line with what the Pro-T was saying. So this one, I really have to give to the Pro-T. That overhead view of that camera, it really means you can fact check everything. You can fact check, you know, the club face at impact. You can fact check the club path as it's coming into impact. Having that visual is massive. And so for the actual club paths, I think the Pro-T is very, very accurate, and I do believe the club path that it actually says. Angle of attack is the final thing I could test between the iMini and the Pro-T, and both of them were within one or two degrees of each other. And this data wasn't consistent. It was sometimes the iMini would report, say, six down on a seven iron, the Pro-T would report five down, and then the next shot, the Pro-T would report six down, and the iMini would report five down. So. Both of them relatively matched, uh, you know, pretty close, and they were both saying the same thing, but it just wasn't as consistent. So they'd kind of flip-flop between which one was saying I was hitting down on the ball more. So I do think the angle of attack on the Pro T is accurate. How accurate? I mean, I'd have to get a GC quad to actually tell you, um, but I do think it is in the right ballpark, just like the iMini is. What I will say with club data is this. Whenever I fact-checked it, I'd hit a shot in GS Pro and it would be a draw. I would go back to the club data, I'd have a look, and I would see that my face was closed, 
relative to the path. So everything made sense from a data point of view to the shot shape that I was seeing. I didn't have any shots that I'd hit where I'd hit a shot, um, I'd see a closed face to path relationship and it would slice. So everything that I saw from the data matched what I saw in the real world. And also the gear effect as well. I'd hit something out of the toe, I would see the face violently twist open, and then I would see the, uh, the golf ball gear left. So everything that I saw in terms of club path, club face, all of that stuff, in my opinion, is accurate. The reason I can be so confident in saying that is because I physically can see the video of the club head as it moves through impact. Okay, let me quickly hit a shot now, and then I'm gonna take you through the other club data that you actually get with the Pro T because it is very, very extensive. To get this actual data, you need to be getting, you know, GC quad, which in, in Australia is like 35 grand. So the actual data you get from this thing is pretty incredible. Okay, so I've just hit a pitch shot just on the GS Pro driving range, just so you guys can see exactly what you get. But we'll start with the top left. So we'll go through the side impact. With this unit, you're gonna get launch angle, you're gonna get dynamic loft, you're gonna get backspin, you're gonna get angle of attack. What's cool about this is you can also get, um, and I'm gonna to talk to Protea about putting this in, you can actually get spin loft, which is your dynamic loft plus, or dynamic loft minus your attack angle. In this case, it's plus because it's, a minor, it's double negative. So you can actually get spin loft out of this as well, which for driver is quite important because if you're hitting shots where you're not generating enough spin, you can actually figure out why. Moving along, you get the front impact. So this is the impact location. You can see it gives it to you in millimeters. You can change all of these metrics to Imperial or the metric system. I have a bit of a mix with both and that's because Generally, golf is universally in Imperial. However, there are certain situations where the metric system makes more sense, like having the impact location because you can get it in millimeters. So as you can see, the impact location there on the club, and if we look at the actual video, we'll pause it, and you can see the impact location is very accurate. It's good. Um, this impact location for me has been fantastic. I'm gonna say 95, maybe more than that, 90, 8% of the shots that I hit, I look at the impact location and it is matching perfectly. The one area where this struggles is when you start to hit flop shots. When I lay the face open and I'm hitting flop shots, that's where this impact location starts to struggle and it does. And I've got a full chipping video coming out that'll show that, but that is the one part it struggles at. Other than that though, for me personally, it has been absolutely fantastic and very accurate. I know early on this was something that they struggled with. However, I do believe now that it is very good. You're also gonna get your smash factor there. You do, in the future, I believe they are working on lie. At the moment, they're not giving that data. So I think they potentially, in the future, will give that as a metric. I hope they do, because that would be fantastic. Moving along, you get your top impact. So this is gonna give you your launch direction. It's gonna give you a face angle. You've got swing path. You also have side spin as a metric there. If you look at the video, and you look at the club face, and you look at the path, all of this data, to me, it just, it, it's always accurate. And this is why I say, when I'm looking at this video, when I have this video on screen, it's hard to argue with the Pro-T because you can visually see what it's doing. The only time I haven't found this to be accurate um, is the putter. I know they're working on different models of putters being accurate. I have to be honest when I say, and you can watch any of my playing videos, you'll see this, with the putter, the club data is hit and miss. It is hit and miss. Now I'm using a Lab DF3, and if you haven't tried a Lab putter, do yourself a favor and just get one. But with the Lab putter, I have found the actual club data to be hit and miss. So it'll say sometimes my club path is like way out to in or way into out. The club face angle will be wonky. The good news is, this unit is gonna read ball data and club data differently. So even though your club data will be off with your putter, the ball data is still gonna be excellent. So with this one, you can see my club is coming a little bit from the inside and it's hitting the ball with a closed club face. And you can see the line on the actual club. If we go to the next frame, you can see it is slightly closed, giving us that uh, closed club face to path relationship and then if you look at the actual shot shape, it is a slight draw. In the GS Pro world, 
and in the Pro-T world. So you're gonna get 20 metrics in total and you can see them on the bottom of the screen. You've got all your ball data, then you've got your smash factor, you've got your club data, and then you've got all the, in the green, the carry, apex, descent, angle, all of that in the green. That is the Pro-T Labs software or algorithm. GS Pro is gonna have its own algorithm and that's why carry distances, descent angles, apex, and all of those things, they can differ between softwares because all the lab software is providing GS Pro with is the ball data. And then the ball data is gonna go into GS Pro and it's gonna go through GS Pro's algorithm. So you are gonna get a lot of data. I know they're gonna add things to this software. They're talking about dispersion circles and things like that. They're also coming out with videos, so it's gonna be similar to the Unicore software where you can have your front and uh, facing and rear videos of your swing. So there are a lot of things happening with the software and it's super exciting, but in terms of data, you do get a lot. And the only real way I'd be able to check a lot of these metrics um, would be to actually get a GC quad in my room to test against. And I might potentially have a way of getting a GC quad but stay tuned, I will try to get a GC quad so I can test all of this data in depth. So fingers crossed, I can make that happen. But all of the club data on the screen and all of the club data that the Pro-T does, I have to be honest, and I do believe that it is true, the only thing I struggle with is the club speed. To me, the club speed potentially needs to be refined to make it a bit more consistent. Okay, so that's full swing data. Let's talk about putting. So like I said, the, the actual club data with putting is hit and miss. The ball data has been spot on. I've played a lot of rounds now on GS Pro and I cannot tell a difference between the Pro T with the HLA, the ball speed, versus my iMini. I have to rave about this thing. The iMini with putting is honestly one of the best devices I've used. This thing is absolutely fantastic with its putting mode, as is the GC3. The GC3 is amazing as well. I actually do like on the GC3 how you get vertical launch angle with putting. You don't get that with the iMini. But the Pro-T with putting, with the ball data, I have not noticed a difference. I have got a full putting video coming. I've got a full putting and a full chipping video coming, so stay tuned for that. But putting, I have to say, has been a, an amazing experience. Let's talk about chipping now. So I have not noticed a difference with the Pro TVX compared to the GC3 with chipping. Like I said earlier in the video, the VLA from the iMini is a little bit lower. And so I do notice a very, very slight difference the way the ball reacts when it hits the greens. But that's because the iMini, in my opinion now, is actually launching a little bit too low. Compared to the Foresight GC3 and now the Rapsod MLM2 Pro, the Pro TVX is amazing at chipping and it does not miss a shot. With flop shots though, the actual impact location on the club, like I said, is slightly off. Watch the full chipping video, I explain it in depth in that video. But just know, ball data on putting and chipping is a fantastic experience and I cannot see any issues. Okay, that is gonna do it for my review of the Pro TVX. One last thing before I sign off. This is actually really exciting. I have reached out to Pro-T. I've sent them an email. I've sent them multiple emails now with all of my data, all of my testing that I've done. I've explained what I feel is, uh, you know, needs to be improved with this unit to make it just that next level. I'm happy to say they have responded and they actually want to work with me. So I'm super excited to say I am testing and I am working with Protein now to refine this data. And like I said, the data is extremely consistent. So I do believe with a few slight tweaks, this thing will just be absolutely incredible. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, please like the video, please sub to the channel. A lot goes into making these videos. A lot goes into testing these units. I really would appreciate the support if you could like and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, let me know. Any comments or questions, leave them down below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.